Hello! So everyone who follows me on Snapchat already knows what I'm about to say. I'm getting over a mild cold, so there's like a lot of swallowing going on. My throat feels super dry. I have a little bit of a head cold, but luckily I'm not dying. That's always a good thing. The video that I wanted to do for you guys next is what I love what somebody called this in the, I think the comment section of the last video, my signature eye look, which is like the default um, eye look that I go to if I'm going to sit down and record a video and I don't want to do anything crazy or I'm going to be on TV or I'm going to be doing an interview. I want to show you guys all the tips and tricks with the eye makeup, the eyeliner. I have gotten a ton of questions about bottom lash eyeliner. Can't wait to share with you guys. You know, I bring out my bag of tricks. Like I want to show you guys how to do exactly what I do. And I have a weird way of thinking about things because I don't have the energy to record something like that. I feel like my head's already starting to feel like compressed. I did jump on Snapchat and I asked you guys to send in your questions for a Q and A. Uh, some of you sent in videos, some of you sent in pictures, some of you just wrote out in text your question. I can't wait to do this with you guys. Um, hopefully this doesn't end up being too long, but it's okay. We'll, we'll do this sometime in the future. I haven't done a Q&A video in years, like four or five, maybe six years. It's been a long time. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the video questions. Uh, and I'll just start with the very first one. Oh, this is Michelle. I love Michelle. My question is, A, can you and Matthew do a collab video together? And B, where can I find my future husband? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you guys are amazing. So Matthew Hussey, yes. I did ask Matthew if he would do a video with me and he said he would be more than happy to. Maybe we can put him in an episode of other people's epic shit. What do you guys think? I think I think his shit is epic. I will put his um, YouTube channel down below. If you don't know who Matthew Hussey is, you are missing out on life big time. He is a relationship expert. I don't really cover relationships. Like I know how to get men and I know how to get rid of men, but the stuff in between, I am not an expert at. Uh, and I always tell people like, go watch Matthew Hussey. Uh, check out his videos. He is, he's a relationship expert, but he covers so much more than that. He's just, he's just amazing at life. And then Michelle, where can you find your husband? It's probably going to be in the most unlikely way ever. Uh, that's always the story. Everyone is just like, it was just so unexpected. It's usually either somebody that you know really well and you just have never seen that way, or it'll be some strange story about how you live like two blocks from each other and you've just never ran into each other and you meet on a dating site. I've heard all of it, but I love Michelle. Michelle is an amazing human being. She, Michelle, is the founder and CEO of Live Love Polish. If you like nail polish like I do, you should go check out her stuff. She's amazing. We've just kind of become friends because she sent me an email and the subject of the email was something like, you need to make more YouTube videos. And she was the reason I actually started uploading videos again. When was I in college and how did I deal with procrastination? So I graduated high school in 2002. I was 16 years old. I went straight into college, so I had to commute. My parents were not gonna let me move out. I mean, I wouldn't let my 16 year old move out. So good job, mom and dad. How did I deal with procrastination? I worked the system. I worked the system. This might be a video worthy um, of going up on my neurology channel, but I definitely believe in like, I do not subscribe to the idea of you just go to class and you take tests and then that's it. I definitely believe in like building a connection with your professor or a relationship, not sleeping with your professor for good grades because that I front. My favorite tip for procrastination, and there's a lot of psychology behind this, but if you have something to do, make the amount of work you have to do to get started so, like, it would be idiotic if you didn't do it. So for example, if you have a 10 page paper to write, tell yourself, put it on your to-do list and say, today I just have to sit down, I have to put my name on the paper, title it, and write the first sentence. So, it's foolish like you can't not do that right like if even if you're falling asleep at night you're gonna be like oh i didn't do that one thing you could pull out your laptop and start to do it but the idea is if you do something so small like that like you make it just so stupid for you not to do that what happens is by the time you get there and you set up your computer and you type that first sentence you're gonna be like well i'm here i might as well do a paragraph or i might as well finish the first page what is it there's a name for it it's some sort of energy it's called it's a little bit like playing a game, playing head games with yourself, but 
it actually really works. Next question, how is your experience as an accountant? So I actually, I have an accounting degree, but I have never been an actual accountant. Like I didn't go for my CPA, I didn't go for my master's fifth year, any of that to qualify me for my CPA. I actually had a mentor who was a couple of years ahead of me and I remember he went and he worked for a big four firm and he knew me so well and understood my values so well as my friend and as my mentor that he came to me and we had a very serious conversation where he said, I know you and you are going to be miserable as an accountant because I was seeking his advice. Like, should I do a fifth year? Should I take the test? Should I actually become an accountant? I was very fortunate to have that. So I didn't get my master's. I didn't do my fifth year. I didn't become an accountant and I have no regrets. No rag rats. If you've ever seen We're the Millers, no rag rats. It's, I actually personally, I love numbers. I love, like, you can leave me in spreadsheets all day long, but I don't think that I could do like tax or audit. I love cost accounting, but that's something I actually get to do a little bit now with the consulting that I do. What is my all time favorite pen? I love you guys. Okay, oh boy. How do I pick one? Like, I could, can I do categories for ballpoint? Even though I prefer gel, for a ballpoint, I like the 1.2 millimeter foray pen. I believe the only place you can get them is Office Depot. I'm not entirely sure, but I will put a link. And for gel, sheesh. Oh wait, for ballpoint, I really also like the Uniball Jet Streams in one millimeter. There's also Dollar Tree has some amazing pens, both gel and ballpoint. So for gel, I'm gonna say, the G2 Pilots, but in the one millimeter. Like I don't like the fine tips. I don't like the 0.5, I don't like the 0.7. I like it thick. Don't make that sexual. Too late, I already did. I love you. I love that you guys know how much I love pens that I would actually have an answer for that. If I think of any other ones that I love, I'll just list them all below. Or if you guys want me to like do a whole pen video, not opposed to that. You guys hear in my voice how it's like, I feel like I'm slowly losing my voice now. Now these are all text questions. Like you guys message me on Snapchat. What is the best way to feel 100% secure with yourself? I'm always constantly thinking of how others perceive me. And it's so exhausting to be in this, this insecure just faking confidence until you make it work. The faking it till you making it concept is just this. It's supposed to take you outside of your comfort zone. Faking it till you make it is not about pretending that you love yourself. It's about taking baby steps, teeny tiny steps every single day to push yourself outside your comfort zone. The secret to being secure, I actually asked my little brother about this and he had such a phenomenal answer that he's either gonna have to record that answer and I'll play it during a video or he's, I'm gonna have to like call him or something. But he said it beautifully when he said, you are just so certain of who you are that you just don't care what other people think. For me personally, I don't care what other people think because I feel like I'm on this earth to get shit done. And in the meantime, I don't intend to live my life cowering from the opinions of others. And those opinions come from everywhere. Obviously, if you put yourself in a public forum, it's complete strangers, which like, I literally don't care if a complete stranger thinks I'm annoying, ugly, stupid, whatever. But it also comes from the people that we love. And I think that that's what's tough. And that's what my toxic video was about that I put up on my neurology channel that a lot of those times it's the people for, that you love and you trust that tear you down and have opinions about you. For me, I have spent a lot of time thinking about this because when I'm ready to talk about it from a very informed perspective, I wanna be able to tell you guys exactly what to do. Like every day you need to wake up and do this to be certain in who you are and not give a shit what other people think. But I will tell you that, well, the self-trust exercise, I will link that below. There's a self-trust exercise I've talked about on Snapchat before that really, really helps. A lot of people who are not secure in themselves feel like they constantly have to ask other people's opinion and then they get upset with those opinions. So practice the self-trust thing. Feeling like getting to a place where you really don't care what other people think is the most liberating thing in the entire world. It is true freedom. And I wish that I could somehow magically like wave a wand and make everybody watching this feel that. I don't wanna talk about it in this fluffy way. I really wanna give you guys like actionable concrete advice. So let me, I need to, I have some work to do in that. I have some thinking to do about it. And then I will get back to you guys and hopefully it'll be in a video. Oh my goodness, somebody just asked me about activation energy. I just talked about activation energy when I answered the question about procrastination. It says, Nur, have you ever heard about activation energy? It's pretty much the energy force required to push yourself out of autopilot. 
your successful woman, how do you snap out of it? Activation energy. Um, it, she's kind of answering her question in the question where you make, like you give yourself such tiny, almost menial tasks. Like say, I just have to do this tiny thing. Instead of thinking of the forest, think of the tree. One little thing, one little thing to push yourself in the right direction. And then once you start doing that thing, um, you're going to already be in the place. You're going to be like, all right, I got this far. I might as well do a little more. Next question. Is it a good idea to remain friends with a guy you are no longer with? Personally, for me, that actually creates more trouble than anything. It's emotional baggage that stays in the way when you're trying to move forward. It blocks you from making progress. It also causes problems for new people that you want to date because I've been in this situation. The new person you're dating, the new guy you're dating is probably going to be like, why are you friends with your ex? Why? Just earlier today, I read an article about people who stay friends with their exes. Now it's circumstantial. It's like, why do you stay friends with somebody that you dated? But it says that people who want to stay friends with their ex might have either narcissistic traits or traits of the dark triad. Without taking too much time up in this video, I will just link to that article down below. I'm not currently friends with anybody that I have seriously dated. There's definitely been guys where like we've gone on a date or two and then we figure out like, yeah, we may be compatible, but there's no chemistry and there may be some benefit to having that friendship. But be careful. Be careful if somebody you dated wants to be friends with you, question their motives, read this article. I don't believe in generalization, so it is definitely case by case. How did you know what career path to choose? I had no idea. When I graduated college, I didn't know my head from my ass. Uh, like I mentioned, I knew that I was not going into accounting. And I've talked about this before in my advice to my younger self video, where I said, we live in a, an incredibly entrepreneurial era and you can circumvent traditional pathways to success left and right. You don't have to be born into wealth. Your parents don't have to have connections. You don't have to go to Ivy League school. A lot of people don't even go to college. Not that I'm promoting that, but I mean, going to college means a lot of debt for a lot of people. So I actually think it can be detrimental if you have a strict path for yourself that you're not sure about, unless you are like, you know, you let's say you want to be an attorney. If you have shot an attorney and you know exactly what it entails and you know how soul sucking the profession can be, then great. Go to law school and become an attorney because for some people that is their actual craft and they love it like it is in their marrow. For everybody else, they're sold some idea about like, this is the path that you should take. This is the career you should have. You're going to make a lot of money. You're going to be secure. You're always going to have a job. You're never going to get fired, even if it's a bad economy. And the people who follow the path for those reasons blind themselves to other opportunities. My path was completely untraditional. I was a nanny for the first year out of college because I loved makeup so much. I wanted to do something with makeup. I wanted to start my own makeup line. And I like my family was like, you're crazy. You are batshit crazy. Lo and behold, I went and I, and I took the corporate career route. But even then I found solace in doing what I love talking about makeup. I'm nowhere near being done doing everything that I want to do. If anything, there's so much more on my plate that I want to do, but leave yourself open to possibility. That's the kind of world that we live in. You don't have to have a traditional pathway to success. You may have to take a traditional pathway to pay the bills in the beginning, but do something that you love, find solace in something that you love, and that will help you not get your soul destroyed in the corporate world or doing something that you don't love. So keep yourself open to possibility. Don't feel like you have to have it all figured out. My life didn't start to make sense until I was 27 years old, 27. Like I had been out of college for a long time. Take the pressure off yourself. What foundation do you use? Your makeup always looks perfect. Thank you so much. I am currently I have on Marc Jacobs Remarkable. Sometimes I mix in a little bit of cover effects because it can be very yellow. Sometimes I feel like I look like a straight up emoji. And then on top of that, I'll put on like Estee Lauder Double Wear or something. I should probably talk about it in another video. So I will list all the foundations down below and then I'll just put a little blurb about everything so that can help you guys out. What advice do you have on being happy and confident? Whoo! I don't know, do you have like five hours? <laughs> Lots of the videos that I'll be uploading on my advice channel will touch on both of these things. But in general, being happy is a choice. It shouldn't be a byproduct, right? Like it shouldn't be, I'm happy because I'm in a relationship. I'm happy because I'm rich. I'm happy because 
I have the best job ever. It should be, I'm happy because I choose to be happy. And that's the predecessor to success. I know I keep talking about the happiness advantage, the book, like it's going out of style, but it's not going out of style. The science and the research and the advice in that book is literally life-changing. For those of you that have read it, I know a whole bunch of people have picked it up on my recommendation. I constantly, like I have people tag me in Instagram posts, send me Snapchats, tweet me and go, that book completely changed my life, my perspective, huge paradigm shift. So happiness, check out the happiness advantage. I will link it down below. There's where I feel like I'm gonna have more links in this video than I've ever had before. I straighten my hair out so much that it doesn't curl much anymore. Question, does your hair still curl? And if it does, will you ever wear it curly for us in a video? I just feel like I look so young with the curly hair and also my hair is not cut for curly hair styles. I may, I don't know, maybe. Maybe I'll just, I'll get really, it's not even about being brave. Like I don't mind my curly hair, but I just feel like my hair like this is so much more manageable. Like I don't even know how to sleep in curly hair and wear it again the next day. Like I can get out of the shower and put some conditioner in it and wear it curly, but by the next day, it is just a hot mess. How do you stay in shape? Ooh, okay. Oh God, that's that could be another video. Let me give you the short version. My skin started to freak out about three or four years ago. I tried everything topical. I actually knew better. I've read a book about how what you eat affects your skin. Then I started to watch what I ate. My skin got better. Then I started adding in certain vitamins and supplements. My skin kept improving and improving. Actually, I ran out of a vitamin that I absolutely love and my skin has been freaking out over the past week. I actually think it's the reason that I got sick too because it's like a green superfood. But basically, no dairy. No sugar, sugar is so bad for your body. I also gave up meat because there's so much hormones in meat and I actually don't really love meat so I don't miss eating meat. Over the past year I've boxed so I've lost a lot of weight boxing. It's a lot of cardio so it's a lot of weight but it's not a lot of muscle so I actually would like to get back into strength training because the best body that I ever had was probably two years ago and it was with my favorite personal trainer, Dave. I actually saw him last week and it was amazing. It was just, I remembered why I loved him so much. She said, seriously, Nur, how do you stay in shape? I eat my emotions. I'm gonna recommend this amazing life-changing book. It's called Brain Over Binge. Unbelievable, unbelievable. It Again, I love empirical stuff. I love science. I bought the book because I had a video come up as a recommendation and it was about binge eating. And then sometimes I'm like, I binge eat. I watched the video and I was like, I gotta read this book. And I read this book and I, and I recommend this book a ton to people. Anytime people tell me that they have a problem with like their emotions and eating or they're telling me straight up they're binge eaters. No one has asked me yet because I think you guys just assumed I was going to answer it because of what I said in the Snapchat. But where was I when I wasn't making YouTube videos? I was doing social media consulting. I was for huge beauty brands. Like my first client was a, a, a brand that sold in Sephora and Ulta. Basically, I went into companies, I assessed their marketing efforts. Usually I would say like, oh, it's just social media. And then I would go in there and be like, I need to look at all parts of marketing. Traditional marketing just doesn't work the way that it used to anymore. I don't have a degree in marketing. I've never worked in marketing before. The funny thing is, is at the end of the day, everything that I taught these brands and I taught these marketing teams had to do with psychology. I said this in my Periscope and I'll say it again, empathy, empathy, empathy. There is incredible value of empathy in business and uh, I don't think enough people explore it, but I basically taught these brands like A, the power of influencers, B, how to talk to them, and C, how to talk to the consumer. The social media has come in and disrupted marketing in a way that People were not ready for. People still don't understand. People are still trying to wrap their heads around it, but it's really simple. We wanna all relate to each other. We all wanna connect. We don't want to see the CEO of a company and say like, mm, well, I don't have $100 million. How do I relate to this guy? So it's fine that he makes $100 million a year, but he's also probably many things. He may be a husband or a father, or he may have had private struggles, and it's really about humanizing a brand. I was incredibly fortunate because I had worked with um, CEOs and founders of companies that trusted me 110%. Like they believed in my unorthodox approach. The proposals that I put together were, they were different, um, different than what PR companies do. And I was just really lucky to have people that 
they just trusted me. There definitely were moments where because it was something new that I doubted myself. I remember having a phone call with my baby brother and he was like, you you sound like you're not sure if you can do this. And I was like, I've never done this before. And he goes, who cares? He was like, you've been in social media for almost, it was at the time, six years. And he was like, you have a brain that understands things in a different way than other people do this prove to yourself you can do this and i had so much fun i actually wish that i had thought to vlog it and like ask permission from my clients to vlog it to get to see the 360 view of business was incredible i will tell you right now if you watch beauty videos and you watch them religiously you can make a career out of that i'm still doing it all the brands that i've worked with you probably heard of they're big brands it's the proof that connection will get you places in life that it doesn't matter. You don't have to be the smartest, the prettiest, the funniest, the most powerful person in the room. You don't have to be any of those things to find yourself in places that you would never have dreamed of before. It has been an incredible experience for me. Am I good at what I do? I'm, I, I yes. <laughs> My brands made a lot of money, made a lot of money. Lots of happy, happy consumers, lots of happy influencers, lots of happy brands. I will probably continue to do it, but I'm paring it down. I am a one woman team. I don't know that I wanted to build out my team because yeah, sure, I could do that, but I definitely have other dreams and you guys are aware of some of those. I will probably take on, you know, maybe like one client at a time. And uh, I do love it. I love the business side of things, but I, on Snapchat, I once said that I wish I could clone myself, but one of my clones would definitely build a consulting empire. Hey, Nur, my question for your Q&A video is how is the process of putting out your very first advice video? I imagine giving advice and sharing your personal philosophy publicly has got to feel pretty vulnerable at first. What inspired you to do that and how did your friends and family react? Great question. You guys, my viewers asked, asked me to do a confidence video. A lot of people said in my comments, hey, you seem really confident. Can you do a video on confidence? That was my how to have confidence video. And I didn't know, like real talk, you and me, look me in the eyes. I didn't know that I thought about the world differently than other people. And you really don't know, like you don't know your brain is different until you take your brain and somehow in some format, share the inner workings of your mind. And the response to that video and the response to many videos thereafter was, this is different than anything I've ever heard before. Like people were like, where did you get your ideas? And I was like, I literally made them up. Like I didn't do research. It was, I sat down and even though the ideas may be similar to other ideas out there, what I did was I sat down and I thought and I thought about it in a very, very analytical way. So that how to speak with confidence video turned into like thoughts on friendships and how to no, it was how to have confidence. The second one was how to speak with confidence. And that's the feedback that I continually got. Was it vulnerable? It was it was it wasn't that difficult because of you like you guys made it easy. You asked for it and I just felt like I'm just giving them what they want. And then the feedback was incredible, but I definitely had friends that <laughs> thought what I was doing was weird. But luckily at that point, I just didn't give a shit. Like you can think it's weird all, the, all you want. You just can't worry about that. You can't worry that somebody might not support you. That's not, I wasn't put on this earth to be supported by people, um, to seek approval. You weren't put on this earth to seek approval. I know it's so against our nature, but we gotta like, we have to release. We have to release and we have to do it quickly. We have to do it early on in our life where we spend our lives living for other people instead of living for ourselves. Would you ever consider selling clothes and being a stylist? I love your style. I think my style is, my style? My style is so basic. Like I accessorize with, you know, jewelry. Like I'm very, I love my jewelry. I love makeup. I even see like hair as an accessory. I, if you guys are interested, I could definitely do more fashion stuff. Like maybe I can do more outfit of the days on Instagram. I get so sick of doing selfies. Like I gotta be completely honest with you guys. I'm, I know I'm not the only influencer that feels like this, but like literally I'm so sick of taking pictures of my face. I just, I don't, uh, huh. I don't know. Like there's just a piece of me that's like really near like another picture of your fucking face. So, that would help me create more content on Instagram if you guys are interested in like, I'm a shoe fanatic. If you follow me on Snapchat and you've seen my shoes in my shoe closet, it's not a shoe closet, it's just my closet, but you've seen my shoes in my closet. You know I love shoes and I am, I love 
fashion, but I like, but it's not like anything like Carly by Bell. I wish, I, and it's not, mm, I was gonna say, I wish I was brave enough, but it's not even about being brave. She just, her fashion is incredible. And I just feel like my style, like I could live in, in a t-shirt and jeans and a cute pair of shoes, whether it's sneakers or heels, depending on the occasion. It's so boring next to somebody who has style like that. Like her style is mwah, impeccable. But if you guys are interested in my basic ass fashion sense, I would be more than happy to share the places that I love to shop, the things like how I pair things together or just, you know, share pictures, outfit of the days and all that stuff. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I th oh my God, I think that that's it. I think we got through them all. I feel like my lipstick is bleeding all over my face. So please be nice if it has. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for being patient with me and my voice and the scratchiness. And like, I constantly feel like I'm, I'm out of breath. That was a lot of fun. Let's do that again sometime soon. Next video, I would like it to be the my signature eye look. And then as always, let me know if there's anything you guys like to see. Yes, you wanna see a nail video. You wanna see an eye makeup video. Some of you have asked for a skincare video. I definitely, you know what? You know what? Let me share some of the supplements that I love that like I had talked about earlier in this video, like the vitamins where I feel like I ran out of my vitamins and my skin's freaking out. Let me share those with you. This video is already gonna be so long. I don't know why I'm dragging it out. I just want to say I love you guys so much. Thank you for everything. I hope that I said something or share something or link something down below that inspires you to be a happier, better human being. Love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Mwah. See you guys soon. Bye.